Hi, I'm Anna, I work for Alice Caroline, and we've got a really exciting English paper piecing starter kit to show you in beautiful rainbow colours. So we've had this in uh, pinks, really, really beautiful soft pinks, and you can see the pink version on the back there. And we're calling it a starter kit because you get everything that you need in it to learn the technique of English paper piecing. And I love English paper piecing, it's quite an exciting thing. Just show you what's inside here. So you get, flip it over, you get this beautiful rainbow of fabrics. I've got to, I've got to open this because they're gorgeous. So all of these fabrics are Tana Lawn, Liberty fabric. And you can just see how beautiful they are. So the amazing thing about Liberty uh, fabrics are that they are such high thread count in the cotton and in the making process that you can get such intricate and detailed designs. So it's really gorgeous patterns. And as you can see, it's in a beautiful rainbow of colors. Oh my word, I love that one. That's a really famous Liberty print called Betsy. And oh God, they're so lovely. We're going through the pinks and the yellows. So you won't be able to feel these, obviously, but if I feel that, it re it's, it's all 100% cotton, tarna lawn, but it feels quite silk-like. And that doesn't make it difficult to sew with. It's still really easy to sew with. So through the blues, Liberty do blues really well. Got loads of blues. And then through the purples. So that's the fabrics. So you get those five inch charms with your bundle. You get your zip, hot pink. You get your papers, so hexagons to, um, I'll show you how to use those in a minute. You get your lining fabric and your instructions. Now, we like to give you full detailed instructions. And of course, this is a starter kit. So even if you're new to sewing and you've never done sewing before, if you can even thread a needle and do a stitch this is, it's a lovely, lovely hand-sewn project. Half of it's hand-sewn and then you, you can finish it off with hand-sewing, but it's easier with a machine, to be honest. So we're making this beautiful little pouch, which you can keep for yourself. And we, you could give it as a gift. I'll tell you what the pouch is really useful, actually, useful for. It's useful for putting your um, English paper piecing things into when you, when you become obsessed like me. So you take your charms and you, you can either use a rotary cutter or uh, scissors. You don't, have to, you don't have to have a rotary cutter and a cutting mat. I've got a cutting mat here. And we're cutting the pieces into four. So they're five inch charms and we're cutting them into, into four of two and a half inch hexagons. And I've cut through four pieces there. You can see, I'll just show you here. I've cut through four with a rotary cutter, went through nice and easy, and then we'll flip it over, match it up, and cut another two and a half inch. You don't have to cut it into four sections. You can equally just use a, just use a, um, a pair of scissors. So then I get my hexagon, and I'm going to place that on. And then I'm going to cut roughly around the hexagon shape using my fabric scissors with approximately a quarter inch seam. You can use a rotary cutter for this as well and you can carry on doing it in fours. <coughs> Just flip that off. So we've got our hexagon paper piece on the wrong side of our fabric. Now loads of people ask with this, like, do you leave the papers in? What, you know, I can't wash it if you leave the papers in, but actually you do, you don't leave the papers in. I'll show you how to take those out. So we are, I'm using a Soline glue pen, which you get in your kit. I'm gliding the glue pen across the paper and then folding the fabric over. And this bit's quite addictive. I like to, this is a really great project to take out and about, but I quite like to prep all my pieces beforehand. So there we've basically got a hexagon wrapped in fabric. So once all of our paper pieces are prepped, we can then sew them together. I'll just move those to one side. So I've made half, almost half of it already so that you can see I've sewn all these bits together. So I'm just going to show the process of sewing a piece on. So some super top tips. I'm using a, a sharp needle 
and it's quite a small one and it's got a gold eye, you can see here. And that's to make it glide really nice and smoothly through, through the tarn lawn fabric. Another top tip is to tie a knot in your thread. Up there, and then that, sorry. And then that stops it from coming out. So all we have to do here is to match up the piece and then you flip it over and do right sides together and then you sew the piece in. So I'm using a whip stitch which basically goes in and out of both bits of fabric. We're trying to catch the fabric only, not the paper piece, but it, if you do catch the paper piece it doesn't matter because it's, it's easily removed. So you can see I'm using lots of tiny little stitches, as many stitches as you can bear to do per inch. Lots of people use up to 25 stitches per inch, but I, I use about eight to 10. And that should be strong enough. So I'm just finishing sewing this piece in. I love sitting and sewing in front of a TV, actually. It's really quite, it's very therapeutic. The thread I'm using is an Aurifil thread. It's 100% cotton and it's a 50 weight. You can see on there that it's a 50 weight. It's a really nice thread to work with. So you can see I've got one more piece to sew on and then we will move to making the pouch. So there's my one side completed. And if we just flip it over, we can see that the papers are still in there. But for this project, we can just take out the papers literally by teasing the paper off. The glue hasn't stuck so hard, but it's not really easy to take the papers out. If it, if it, if they do get stuck, if, they, if you've left it a long time between actually making and taking the papers out, sometimes they can be a bit more tricky, but if you just dab it with a tiny bit of water, it will come off. And so we're going to take all those papers out and then start making our pouch. So here's my finished English paper piecing um, front of the purse. And here's my lining cut to size. And I'm just going to use the lining as a guide. So I'm going to place that on top. And then I'm going to rotary cut around the outside. That's worth saying that I've pressed it and I've used a starch. You can, a starch gives it a really nice crisp finish and it makes it easy to work with. So I'm just going to use a rotary cutter and a ruler to get a nice finish around the outside. You can also use a pair of scissors. I'm going to twizzle that, but at this stage, a, um, a movable rotary cutter uh, mat would be useful. So I've trimmed all the sides. I'm just gonna put my lining fabric to one side for the moment. And at this point, you need to make sure you want, you know what you want as the top of your bag. So on this one, I've done one side already, and it's exactly the same process for the second side. I've got the purples at the top, and then I'm going down to the rainbow of, of pinks and reds at the bottom. So I'm gonna do the same on this side. So I've got my zip halfway open. I'm going to put it right side. So zip right side down. And you just need to make sure you've got your sides lined up and your top lined up. So, sides and the top, pinning the zip in place. And it's important to have the zip halfway open so that you can glide more easily along. Now I very sillily left my zipper foot at home today, but I'm gonna show you with a regular foot because it's possible with a regular foot and there are lots of people out there who don't have a zipper foot. So let's move across the sewing machine. So I've just got my standard sewing machine foot in, but I've moved the needle across to the left. And then I'm going to use the needle down position on my sewing machine. Not all sewing machines have it, and it's fine if you don't. It's just useful for when you are 
moving halfway through the zip. So I'm just going to sew that in and then when you get near to the zip pull you need to lift your presser foot, move the zip to the other side, put the presser foot down again and keep sewing. That way it stops you from getting a, a wobble in your sewing line. If you've got a zipper foot, you don't need to do that. It should just glide past it. So that's one side sewn on. <clears throat> then we're going to cover that over with my lining fabric. So again, zip halfway, do this, put this over the top. Make sure you've got your sides lined up. Pin in place. Make sure it's straight very easy bag to make and once you've sort of made one of these and you follow the instructions in the kit it's uh it's, it make, they make really nice presents to, to give to people you can just use normal fabric you don't have to english paper piece so we're going to sew over the top of the lining fabric you can see i'm leaving my pins in Again, we're going to stop at the point where we need to take that pin out because it's this side of the move the, the zip and then keep sewing. Lots of people are scared of zips, but they're actually really easy to put in. I mean, this is a standard zip. And then you can, invisible zips are another matter, but you can see from this that we have got, that's the lining side of the bag. And this is the actual side. So you can see from this that it's got the makings of our bag. Now what we're going to do now is unzip the zip halfway and we're going to sew our right sides together of the bag front and the bag back. So I'll start pinning it and then we'll come back in a minute. So we're going to sew the right sides of the lining together and the right sides of the bag together. We're going to leave uh, a gap at the bottom so that we can turn the bag through. I'm just going to do a, a back stitch here, make it really secure. Again, I'm using the needle down position so that when I get to the corners, Stay there, we can just twizzle it round and just carry on sewing. You just need to take care when you get to this section because you are sewing through essentially in some places four pieces of fabric plus the zip. So it can get really stiff, and if that happens, you just crank the side to get it through the bits and you don't want to break it on the teeth of the zip either. So I'm just finishing off sewing my lining and we'll just leave a gap at the bottom so that we can turn it inside out. Again we'll put a couple of back stitches in there. And then this is the exciting bit. Going to turn it inside out to make the big reveal. Just sort of shove the beautiful fabric delicately through the lining, and you've got your zip to make that work. We're poking it up through, and then you need a sort of a a pokey thing to poke the corners out. I'm just going to use my finger for now, but you can use all sorts of things like a, a pen. 
pencil that's covered in something with a cling film. And there we have it. Absolutely lovely EPP starter kit rainbow pouch. So I hope you've enjoyed this project today. It's a lovely first project to start English paper piecing with. And we've got lots of other projects that uh, if you get as obsessed as I am with English paper piecing, you can go to our website and have a look.